Bible says this morning. Please show me your hand. If you are born of God, the Bible says that automatically you overcome the world. It is like whatsoever is born of a dog, barks. Whatsoever is born of a bird, flies. I mean, have you ever seen a dog barking and you are surprised that the dog is barking? Because it's a dog. How many of you are surprised to see a fish swimming in water? Because it is a fish. I mean, when you see a fish riding a bicycle, that's a different matter. But when a fish is swimming, that is serious. And God says that if you are born of God, then you must overcome. Instantly. And so you have to know that you are an overcomer. Nobody has to make you what you were born white. Because the day you were born of God, instantly there was a seed that was planted in you that makes you an overcomer. And ladies and gentlemen, God said that these stones, these 12 stones, are meant to be a testimony for future generations. Listen, there is something about testimony, your testimony, your word, that inspires other people. There's something about your testimony that even silence your detractors. There's something in there. The Bible says that for they overcame the devil by the word of their testimony, the word of their testimony. You see, when you have a testimony, a testimony settles the issue. That's right. That's right. That is what I tell people. Listen, a person with an experience is never at the mercy of a person with an argument. When the thing has happened to me, once upon a time, ladies and gentlemen, I knew I was dying. I was just about 20, 21, 19, 21. I was dying. I mean, I knew it. Everything about me was dying. I was just passing water that was blood. I mean, it wasn't what it was blood for months. They took me to every hospital, every medication. It went on and on. My mom came, came to see me be one day. I mean, she almost passed out. What is wrong? And I knew I was dying. And I was a non believer. And I didn't care about Jesus. I didn't care about anything. I was on drugs. I smoked everything from grass to bamboo. Took enough alcohol to float a ship. And I didn't care. And I was dying and I could care less. Until one afternoon I heard a voice. I was lying on the bed. One afternoon everybody had left home. And I knew I was dying. And I heard a voice in my ears. I don't know whose voice is it. But today I know. And the voice said, have you asked God to heal you? And out of my, my, my unbelieving state. And hearing that voice. I just said, God. If you are that God that people talk about, heal me and I will give my life to you and serve you. I fell into a deep sleep and two hours later I woke up. I forgot about that experience. I went into the bathroom to pass water and it was crystal clear. And that same night I went to a disco and cracked my life all night. But how many of you know that God will always catch up with the promises that you made to him? Two years later he caught up with me on that Wednesday night and I knelt down at the foot of the cross and one drop of blood from the face of Emmanuel touched me and set me free. Broke the chains of drugs and alcohol broke everything and put something on my inside and committed into my hands uh, the word of restoration and the word of the gospel listen I am the most unlikely person to bring the gospel to you because of where I have come from but I can testify and so let anybody write in the book let anybody say something that God doesn't heal I am a testimony of the fact that God is a healer and so when I lay hands on you I know that God will heal you tonight when I speak a word in your life I know God can heal you because I am a miracle let anybody say whatever they want but I have experienced it and I know and it is in my bones, and you can't take it away from me. And one day, somebody's going to ask me, What do these stones mean? And I'm going to tell them that it is the stone of healing because God Almighty did it. Let there be a testimony in the house of God. When He has done something for you, speak it forth. Yeah. There is something about your testimony, people. That is why, when you look at the life of Paul, many times he never preached. In fact, Paul was not a very good preacher. He himself said it, that I'm not a good preacher. You accuse me that my words are nothing, but my right. The man wasn't a good preacher. It will surprise you. That's why you are quiet. That's why you have me. Paul wasn't a very good preacher. He was a very good writer. But he was not a good. He preached one day until somebody fell down and died. I mean, how can you that? You? <laughs> you know, he preached and you took us. He just fell down and died. Mercifully, Paul still had the resurrected power, so he resurrected it. I mean, how can you be a good preacher when people are dying when you are preaching? Yeah. One time I was preaching and, you know, somebody was about to fall asleep and they wanted to wear it. So, no, no, wake that person up. When I'm preaching and somebody sleeps, don't wake them up. Wake me up. <laughs> you can't sleep. I dare you to sleep. You can't. You can't. But Paul was always giving his testimony. That's why he said the first Corinthians. He said, when I came to you, my preaching was not with excellence your speech when I came to declare to you the testimony of God. He said, I just testified. And about five times in the book of Acts, all that you see Paul doing is testifying. He never preached. He just testified. In Acts chapter 22, in the city of Jerusalem, he stood before the people and he testified. He said, you know the life that I lived. But 
now look at me. How can you take it from me? Listen, there are some of my 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 folk where well, they call them classmates. I don't have one now. But sometimes I meet some of them and, and they just the, the mere fact that they look at me, they have to give their lives to the Lord. Because I was the deputy devil. But I'm telling you, people just sometimes I meet some of our church members and they say, Pastor, we met your classmate. The moment they say we met your classmate, I know what is coming next. So I tell them I don't have any classmates. Because that person they are talking about, he died many years ago. He was buried in baptism and resurrected to walk in the midst of life. But I don't have a classmate. I got born again alone. I tell people, me, I think I even got born again by mistake. Because when the man was preaching, I was under so much conviction. You know, sometimes we don't even understand the move of the spirit any longer. I went to church to please a woman. She had given me so much pressure, so much pressure. Please come to church. So just to get her off my back, I said, you know what, Sunday I'll go to church. And Sunday I had gone to do my thing and I came home. I was minding my business and she said, you said you go to church. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll go, wait for me. And I went and slept. After one hour, she knocked on the door and said, I'm still standing there. I said, oh Lord, I had the quickest bath ever. And I followed her like a lamb to the slaughter. Insulting her as we went. This church business. This all the pastors, they are thieves, they are liars, they are this. And I went to the church. And when I looked around, I saw some people I wasn't seeing at the disco any longer. This pastor has spoiled the town for us. All these nice women have done that. That's why we don't meet them at the disco anymore. I will show this pastor where our lives. And the choir started a song. There was no music, nothing. And they started singing, Oh Lord my God, when I know someone. And here was I, a hardened criminal. And all of a sudden, tears began to come out. And I said, I don't like this feeling. What is this? But there was something happening to me. And I said, No, 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 no. no. When I, once I get out of swan, once they let me lose, I ain't coming back. And you know, this preacher will preach and he will come right to where I was and look at me and say, You got to give your life to Jesus. And I said, And they brought me here to set me up to disgrace me like this. And so right after church, when they said, Let us share the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus, I was about one mile away. And I was gone home. And the lady came home in the afternoon and said, You don't enjoy yourself. And I said, You. I don't like this nonsense. So you brought the man to come and insult me. You, this, she said, No, 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 no. The man doesn't insult no. I said, No, you talk to the man about me. How many of you have felt that with you? Now the picture lived in your house. And so when you are going home, you fight the person who brought you to church. I said, So you let the man insult me like that? Telling me things about my. I mean, why did you. The woman said, Listen, the man is a visiting speaker. He came this morning from a city called. He, he doesn't even know that. I said, Are you sure? She said, He's new. I said, Boo. Mm. And she said, I come to church again. I said, Me? No way. No way. No way. You know what? The whole of the week I couldn't think straight. Yes. Wednesday night, before the doors were open, I was already standing there. Yeah. I had to check this thing out again. I'm telling my testimony because this is. The stones. This is how far he's brought me. I, I'm not beginning to tell you the, the gory details. I don't want you to be like entertainment. You do not have an idea. You see, when people are misbehaving, I look at them and I laugh. Because you haven't seen what I've seen. And you haven't done quarter of the things I've done. I'm telling you. Some of us, we were suspended from school. And when the suspension was over and we came back, the whole school stood up and cheered. And they told us to go right back because we were a threat to security. <laughs> Some of us were so bad that bad people called us bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was so bad that bad people called me bad. So 